Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all having a great night. I uh, hope you're all having fun in 8.3. Um, if you've been away from the game for a while, or at least from retail, uh, hopefully this was enough to entice you to come back in and start enjoying the game a little bit. That's certainly the case for me. Uh, we have gotten a new intro cinematic for this latest patch. Uh, as always, it's a really, really good one. So I thought that I would go over a few things, and if you would indulge me, uh, break this down a little bit and do a little bit of analysis, because once again, I think Blizzard has done a tremendous job at adding in some additional layers to this cinematic. Um, it's very thematically parallel to other cinematics of the past, even from several, several expansions ago. And uh, hopefully you'll get to see those as we break this down. Uh, this is not a reaction video. Uh, I've seen it several, several times. Um, it's it's really, really good. And um, seeing Anduin slap the piss out of Rathion was even a hundred times better than you could ever imagine it to be. But uh, I'll be starting and stopping at various points just to go over a few things that I think are important or I think were really cool and some things that hopefully you didn't uh, catch or see uh, before. So let's uh, let's get this started. I already have it pulled up here and here we go. You mean to tell me none of your spies have returned? Nizoth is out there and we need... First things first, you hear Anduin's voice. He's yelling at someone. He's very agitated, which is very uncharacteristic of Anduin. He's usually the very quiet, calm one. Everyone's got to get along. Um, and it, it can get a bit annoying at times. But here you can tell he's clearly pissed at somebody and he's taking it out on someone. You'll also notice we get a top-down view of Stormwind Keep. And you see two figures. You can tell one of them is Magni, just because he's a giant diamond and the other one you can't really tell but it's very similar to uh, a part of a cinematic from wrath of the lich king and i'll go over and show you that in just a second because there's some more parallels uh, between that as well answers now we are doing all we can speaker magni is next thing so we've got a great shot of the keep and the throne room and one's on his throne uh, again, looking pissed, and you've got uh, Matthias Shaw and Valera Sanguinar standing before him trying to explain what the situation is, uh, and, and Anduin's having none of it. Um, one thing that I noticed right away was some people that are here and some people that are not here. Over to the right, you'll see Bane and you'll see Mela High Mountain, two members of the Horde. Um, have been long members of the Horde, especially for Bane. Uh, the High Mountain Tribe joined back in Legion as uh, one of the allied races. Um, so they're there in Stormwind Keep. This is just building on the whole premise that the Alliance has formed a, a lasting peace treaty uh, after the Fourth War with the Horde and them there in the Thermal Room in the Keep is just more evidence to that. Uh, uh, Anduin took a big step in convincing the rest of the Alliance that this was worth doing. So this is his way of showing that he is meaning what he's saying. And uh, they're at peace. There is no hostilities now with the Horde. Um, Sylvanas is a different story. Notice, however, who was not here. There is no Gen Greymane. There is no Jaina Proudmoore. There is no Velen. Gen and Velen have been at Anduin's side for almost the entirety of two of the last two expansions. Everywhere Anduin went in Battle for Azeroth, Gen was always right there. In just about every cinematic you see, if you saw Anduin, you saw Gen. Every cutscene in the game, if Anduin was there, Gen was there. This is the first time, this is the first glimpse, first cinematic that we've seen where Gen is not there offering advice or just being protection for Anduin in whatever he's doing. So... Uh, Tyranda is obviously still pissed at Anduin. She's uh, no longer even in Stormwind. Uh, they went back to Ashenville. So, uh, yeah, the Alliance is about to blow up. Uh, we're, we're, who knows when we're actually going to see it, but there's going to be a schism in the Alliance uh, that's going to fester, and it's going to blow up in your face. Coming along with a new advisor. He claims to have information for us. Oh, by the light. A new advisor. <clears throat> and here we go. So you've got King Magni Bronzebeard, the Speaker of Azeroth, and the first chance that you see Rathian 
in this expansion with his new model. Um, again, so I wanted to show real quick the parallel between this cinematic and one from a long time ago. So this is the cinematic for the release of Ult the Raid of Alduar. So you've got another bronze beard explaining his story. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. Uh, he's clearly escaping Old War and he flies off to Dalaran to tell everyone else exactly what's happening. And then you have Ronan who is trying to explain the situation to Varian Wren, King of Stormwind. And there's Jaina. Ah, King Varian. Thank you for coming on such short notice. What's this all about, Ronan? I've, I've called you here to ask for your help. While our and here's, King again, top-down view. Steps going up to a meeting and of its dark with members of uh, antagonists, let's just say. With its binding shattered. Its again, they're talking about checked. the arrival of it's an old god. After us. Uh, very similar to what we have here with the reappearance, reemergence of Nazoth. Here they're just talking about Yog saron So very, very thematically similar. And even some of the camera angles you'll see in just a second when you see Garrosh and Thrall walking up the steps uh, into the place where they're all having a meeting. And we're going to be the prisoners. Here we go. Nice top-down view of Dalaran. And then Jaina sees Thrall and Garrosh. And she goes off to try and intercept them so they don't go into the room and interrupt Varian. And Varian uh, loses his mind, which happens anyway, which we'll get to in just a second. Anduin. So this is the first time that Anduin has seen Rathian since the events at the end of Mists of Pandaria. Um, excuse me. Yeah, end of Mists of Pandaria, because Rathian sets up the entire expansion for Warlords of Draenor and disappears, thinking that he is doing the right thing and preparing Azeroth to fight the Burning Legion. Um, Anduin and Rathian had developed a relationship of a sort. Um, a lot of people will tell you that there was a romantic relationship. I don't buy that, but anyway, it you know, whatever floats your boat. But this is the first time that he's seen him in probably a few years. So however long it's been since the two expansions. And this this what happens next is awesome. It, it's it's a it's a quality of Anduin's character that we need to see more often. It's been so long. <laughs> the the sound effect is perfect because it's something out of a cartoon. Um, it, it's the sound effect that you wish you know, and all the imaginary fights you get into you, in your head, what your punches should sound like, that's exactly what that sounded like. It's uh, hilarious. Dragons. <laughs> I suppose I deserved that. Oh, you deserve more than that. My father is dead because of you. And my father is dead because of the old gods. <sighs> it still doesn't let Rathion off the hook. Uh, yes, he's he lost his father as well, um, but uh, Rathian helped bring that about, so it's not like he had some deep connection with his father. Um, the the events that Rathian set in motion has, has had way more dire consequences for Anduin than the old gods corrupting uh, Deathwing and the rest of the Black Dragon flight. Uh, Rathian was born well after that happened, so it's it's personal but not really uh, not certainly not as personal as it is the events that transpired that uh, as personal as they are to Anduin also just one thing I, I thought of when I was watching this this is the first time well actually let me, let me rephrase that the last time a black dragon was in Stormwind Keep it was Rathian's sister and she was manipulating the throne and helped orchestrate the disappearance of King Varian Wren. Anduin was a little boy. He was technically king, but Bolvar Four Dragon uh, was the steward or the high protector of Stormwind uh, in Varian's absence, watching over the prince. Um, if you if you're playing classic and you go into Stormwind Keep, you can actually mouse over Anduin, 
the little boy Anduin, and it actually says King of Stormwind. Uh, Varian is is gone at that point, all because of Rathian's sister. So that's the last time that a black dragon was in this keep. So it's kind of uh, uh, historical to have another one uh, come in and try to be an advisor again um, with maybe or maybe not uh, nefarious uh, purposes behind his, his, his goals here. Lad. He's come to help us. Notharian the Earthwarder was once the protector of Azeroth, but Nazoth turned a noble mind to madness, and now my father is only remembered as Deathwing. And as I haven't the least desire to share that fate, I've been studying how to avoid it. I still think, um, I think we can trust Rathian. I think he, he is actually trying to restore the Black Dragon Flight. I think he's trying to protect Azeroth from the old gods. I, I certainly believe him when he says he does not want to share the same fate that his father did. Um, but man, he can be such an he can be such an ass. And I still at the end of the day, at, at the end of this expansion, I think he's going to be doing the right things for the right reasons and it's going to be uh, all for naught. Um, I think just personally, I think Nazoth is going to win at the end of this expansion. Uh, even when we think that we have won and we're going to get our loot when the raid is complete. But I think at the end of this expansion and leading into the Shadowlands, uh, the, the player base, no, us, uh, we're going to lose. Uh, this is going to be our first defeat, actual defeat in game, where we don't save the day. Just tell me how to prepare for this attack. Our armies will be useless. Nazoth will strike here. He'll manipulate emotions, get people to act in ways contrary to their nature. You won't be able to trust your senses, your memories, your friends. After all, what is real if our perceptions cannot be trusted? That's a, this is a very cool scene. Uh, this is one of Anduin's visions where he's being attacked or at least seemingly attacked by Nazoth. Um, the, the, the quote there uh, by Rathion uh, just kind of reinforces the point I was trying to make about how I think this expansion is going to end. What is real if we can't trust our perceptions? We think we've won, everything's going well, but is it is it real? Did we really win? Also notice coming up here that Nazoth is attacking here the Cathedral of Light. Um, again, it's massive void entity going after the physical uh, symbolism of the light in Stormwind. Uh, Anduin is the human embodiment of the light in Stormwind. As, as king and also as the priest that he is, he embodies the light. So Nazoth being a major void entity and a void lieutenant uh, going after him makes perfect sense. Um, it, it's also telling that Stormwind is always attacked from the, the backside or from the harbor side. No one ever goes in through the front gates anymore. Uh, in every vision, like uh, back in the, the Siege of Orgrimmar, uh, you see the, uh, the, the vision uh, in, the, in the fight against Garrosh. I believe it's in the fight against Garrosh where uh, uh, the horde is attacking Stormwind, and uh, they're all they're attacking from the harbor, from the water. No one ever goes in the front gates. Those two ballistas have been outside the front gates since Classic, and they've got spider webs because no one ever rolls up on the front gates of Stormwind. Don't know why, but uh, this is a pretty cool shot. Anduin. 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 Don't you see, old friend? It's already begun. Very well, advisor. Tell us how to stop him. So yeah, that's it. So Anduin begrudgingly, uh, I don't think he fully, he, well, he doesn't. He doesn't fully trust Rathian at all. Um, but I think he has been made to see that Rathian clearly has a plan and he's willing to at least listen. Um, he did call him advisor. 
Uh, so he's he's going to accept him into that role. And um, after this cinematic, you you roll right into uh, the the play of eight point three, and it sends you on a very long, very long quest chain uh, to uh, one get uh, your first uh, iteration of the legendary cloak that Rathian makes for you, and it sends you all over the the, the planet um, in, in various ways to the other the Oldham, Oldawar, Oldaman, um, no, the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. You get to go back there as well. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's very very interesting that this that Rathian is, has, is back, and he's going to end this expansion uh, in a very very big way. He's going to be a major player. Uh, he may be the most important, other than Sylvanas, uh, the most important NPC in this expansion, uh, coming in at the tail end uh, to uh, help usher in the next expansion. But one thing, one thing um, I wanted to note, just because it's hilarious, and it's the first thing I thought of when I saw his model. Um, everyone is uh, losing their minds just about how beautiful Rathian is, and you know, oh my God, everyone wants to to, to be. All the guys want to be him, and all the girls want to be with him, uh, as the old saying goes. But the first thing I thought of, let me find a good picture here to uh, freeze frame, just so you can see. We are doing all we can to uh, to highlight here. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here he is. Rathian. Find a good pausing Bad point way. here. It's been so long. So this hair is apparently just driving everyone nuts about how beautiful it is. But the first thing I thought of was if you're if you're old enough to remember. Uh, the movie Coming to America with Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. It's one of the great comedic classics uh, in American cinema anyway. Uh, you, you may be a little too young, and that's fine, but if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it because it's hilar uh, a hilarious movie. But it also has a bit in it. It's a very small part, but it's the first thing I thought of. Uh, there's a product uh, that one of the characters in the movie's family uh, owns the business, and it's called Soul Glow. And his hair, Rathian's hair, is is so glow through and through. So I found the bit, um, and it's it's hilarious. Here we go. Here we go. Just you can't watch this and now not think of Rathian. Do not be ridiculous. You can be all the things you always wanted to be beautiful sexy there it is soul glow so yeah take a good sh good long look at that and let that seep into your mind because that's Rathian. Um, and now you can unsee it, so I'm, I'm glad I was able to do that for you. Oh, well, anyway, I think that's uh, that's it. That's a good that's a good encapsulation. Um, if this is going to help set up a lot of things, there's a lot of uh, themes running through this uh, subliminal themes that are going to set up, especially the intermachinations of machinations of the alliance. Um, that the splintering of the alliance is going to happen. Um, you know, we've gone through several iterations now of the horde breaking apart with the new war chief, seemingly every expansion for the past five, six years. So um, I think uh, turnabout is fair play, and the alliance is about to is about to suffer a schism. So we shall see. We shall see. Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed that little breakdown. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, the cinematic as much as I did. And I hope you're having fun in 8.3. So until next time, we'll see you later.